had one fish one time. I'm, you know, I'll make this short. Cause we, you know, we keep going. Belly up. Uh-huh. It was belly up. This thing was floating. Uh-huh. And my daughter was going, Dad, the fish is dead. So I went over and prayed for the fish. Uh-huh. That thing lasted another year or so. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, you cannot underestimate the power of God. Amen? Yeah. 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 He's a miracle working God and he works yes, him every day. Whether you realize it or not, yes. he's working a miracle in you every breath you yes. take. Yes. Amen? Yes. The enemy's going to try to take that from you and make you feel like, oh, God doesn't work no more, enemies, because, or miracles, because it's over. No, it's continuing on and on and on. And as we continue to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to see more and more and more and more and more. Understand this for a second. The apostles, when Jesus said, go pray for them, they went out there and prayed for people. And when stuff happened, they went, whoa, it worked. Uh, Remember? Whoa, it worked. Can you imagine what God can do through you if you understand the power that's in you. Amen. You can pray for anything, anybody, anytime. And believe by faith it's going to happen. It might not happen that second, but it will happen. Amen. That's the God we serve. Yes. Amen. Father, we come before you this morning and we say yes and amen. To all that you're about to do in our life. So all that you've already done and for all that you're going to do. As we enter into a time of worship right now, Lord, we pray that we give it all over to you and hold nothing back because you deserve it all. We pray today, Lord, for Tim and Chris as they travel, be with them, watch over them, protect them, guide them, and bring them home safe, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you have your way today. This is your service, not ours. It doesn't belong to us. This is your service. Move as you wish. Move as your will testifies. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. He's pointing to. I want you to do me a favor. Look to your left. You don't have to go behind you, but vision yourself looking behind you. And then look to your right. And then look in front of you. God has given you every ounce of that territory. Every part of that territory belongs to you. If you have family members that live in those four corners, they have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Some of them don't even know. Amen. It's up to us to tell them. Amen? Amen. And sometimes we tell them just by an example. Right? Sometimes we show them Jesus' love just by what we do. Sometimes we can reach them just through prayer. Because I got news for you, folks. When you run up against a wall, you look for help. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. My mother, my aunt, my uncle, my father told me about this guy named Jesus. I guess it's time I need him. Sometimes it takes that wall for people to realize it's time for a change. Amen? And the closer we get to the end of the age, the more and more and more people are going to wonder, where can I be set free from the depression, from the hopelessness, from the fact that I have no joy anymore? Your hope and your joy comes from within. Your hope and your joy comes from Jesus, who's seated at the right hand of the Father, where the Bible says he intercedes for you. You know when the enemy shows up, he says, what about that person down there? You know what Jesus does? Pulls out his advocate card and says, You can't touch him. (laughs) And I can almost see him like, What do you mean? You can't touch those people? They've been bought, paid for by my blood. Get away. Amen? Amen. Isn't that what Jesus does? Isn't that what he said he would do? Isn't that what the Bible says where he intercedes and prays for us daily? Isn't that what he does? The accuser is still accusing, folks. He's still doing it. But greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Amen? I have no idea who you're going to Let's keep going. Let's see what happens here. Amen? Seems to be on a road. You know? Hallelujah. You know, 
we think we have the ability to walk it out, and we don't. <laughs> we think we do because our pride says, hey, you can do it. No, we can't because the enemy comes along and cuts their feet out from underneath of you, and you fall on your face. Thank God that's a good place for most of us because in that position, God says, yeah, let me help you up. Let me help you up. You don't belong down there. Why don't you belong down there? Because you've been bought, purchased, and paid for by the blood of the Lamb. You don't belong down there. You belong sitting with me in heavenly places. Amen. Sometimes we get to looking about our situation and where we walk in and where we live in, and we fail to realize this isn't. <laughs> this isn't ours. Ours is in heaven. Amen. Our truth is in heaven. Our life is in heaven. This is temporary stuff. Sometimes we put so much emphasis on the temporary that we forget about the eternal. For some reason, we think we have to make it right. You know what? God's already made it right. All we need to do is follow his example. Amen. God's already done it. It's finished. It's complete. The war is over. Now all we have to do is win each individual victory in our life, which is guaranteed if you keep your eyes on him. Amen? You have victory in Jesus' name. Last week, okay, we're going to go there. Psalms 27. Last week I read this scripture to you. And I said there's ten points in this scripture that I want you to get, the first three verses. Can you imagine such a thing? Three verses, there's ten principles in there. Isn't that the way God works? I got this for you. And by the way, I got more. Well, Lord, let me digest this first. Okay, go ahead and hurry up because I got more. How many of you are hungry and thirsty this morning? How many of you want all that he has for you? <laughs> Holding nothing back. Lord, if you ask me to do that, and this is for me, you better give me the power <laughs> to walk in it because I am weak. And I can almost hear what God told to Paul. Well, finally, you're weak. Now I can be strong in you. Amen? Amen? I want you all to make a promise to me. Promise to the Lord. I want you all to keep Aaron in your prayers. Always. Always. So. I want you to keep Aaron in your prayers because God has a call on this man's life. You might not see it. You might not understand it, but there's some things that God's dealing with in Aaron's life that when he comes out the other end, Katie, bar the doors. Amen? And you know who Aaron's going to go to when he gets his strength built up? You know who he's going to go to? He's going to go to all those that came from where he came from. The life that he led. He's going to say, you know what, I have an answer for that, brother. I have an answer for that, sister. I was where you were, and this is where I'm at today. Let me show you how to get through it. And his name is Jesus. Amen? Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord, God Almighty, Yahweh, Elohim, whatever you want to say, is my light. He's your light. He brings light when you think you're walking in darkness. He is your light. He brings light to the past that you thought are unlightable. How many of you sat in this room so often, not in the, or in this room, maybe not sitting, I hope you don't think about that while you're in here. But how many of you, when you're alone or by yourself, think about, man, how come it's so bleak? How come it's so dark? What's going on in, in, in me? How come I can't see that path? And it's amazing to me that every time I come to that place, I hear this word. I have never left you. I will never leave you. And when you need to be carried, that's when I pick you up. But our pride so many times says, Lord, I can handle it. I can do it. Let me turn my own flashlight. I got news for you, folks. Your flashing ain't got nothing compared to what his light is. Amen? I am your light. And you are my salvation. Not only are you my light, but you're also my salvation. Because of your light that shined in darkness, and 
because of your blood sacrifice, I am now saved from the world way of thinking. Does that make sense? I no longer belong to the world. I might be in it. I might be a part of it, but I'm not with it. Amen? The Lord is my light and my salvation. If the Lord is your light and he's your salvation, who are you going to fear? If God is your light and he's your salvation, who are you going to fear? I'm talking about worldly fear. I'm talking about fear that who are you going to fear? No one. If the Lord is your light and your strength. Sometimes I think that has to be revelation that the Spirit gives us to understand that Jesus is our light and He is our strength. I remember when Gideon was sweeping the, the, the grape juice cellar. Well, he used to make the wine. He's sweeping it away. God speaks to me. Hey, I got more for you than this. Well, I'm the lowest of the low of my clan. There's no one. I'm, I'm at the very bottom. And you all know the story of Gideon. He came out of that cellar and he did some stuff, didn't he? Can you imagine God telling him, only, only bring the ones that bring the water to their mouth and keep an eye out. Don't worry about the ones that are lapping it up because that means they're not keeping their eye out. And God tells you this, keep your eye out. Keep looking. Gideon went to battle with 300 people. And he conquered nations. Why? It's because the Lord was his might and the Lord was his strength and the Lord was his salvation. Verse, the Lord is the defense of my life. The Lord is the defender of my life. He is the strength of my life. He defends my life. Some of you think, well, man, my life's not really worth defending. Oh, well. The sooner you get rid of that mentality that you're not worth it. And like I've said many, many times, I'm not worthy of the cross, but the cross has made me worthy. So we are worthy to walk in that power and that strength. Who am I going to fear? Who am I going to be afraid of? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, who am I going to be afraid of? Who am I going to, who am I going to, why am I going to be afraid of the wicked? We all run across wicked people, don't we? They don't bring you fear because of who he is in you. So you can't be afraid. You can't walk in fear. You can't walk in, in, in anything but trust in him. So the Lord is your light, He is your salvation, and you trust in Him. Amen. Trusting is something that a lot of people don't get. Why? I'll tell you another little tidbit of my testimony. It's okay, I want to get to you. I grew up not trusting anyone or nobody. I don't care who you were. I don't care what you did. I didn't even trust my drill instructors in the Marine Corps. I never even trusted those people that I went to battle with. You know why? Because trust in me was depleted by the way I was raised. So for me to trust in something was a hard thing to do. Until God brought me revelation by the power of the Spirit that you can trust in me. Because I am the author and the finisher of your faith. Some of us in this room don't have a place for trust because we don't understand what it means to be trustworthy or to be trusted or to have trust in someone else because of what we went through in our life. And I hate to say this, but some of us, even in our Christian walk, have been not treated very well. And it caused us, I'm not going to trust that guy even though he says he's part of this crowd and he loves the word of this and that, but look what he did to me. Look what he did to me. And you know what happens then? God says this, just like Jesus told Peter, you don't worry about him. You come follow me, and I'll deal with him. And I'll put my trust, my hope, my joy in you. Again, 
when the adversaries come against us, when the enemy comes against us, when all the world seems to fall apart around us, we cannot be worried about our enemies because our enemies have been defeated. The Bible says your warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the air. Once we come to understand that, that we don't, that we don't have to fight a battle. We just have to maintain the station. That makes sense? There's no retreat. We have to maintain our walk because the enemy has already lost. He just don't know it yet. Matter of fact, I don't think that's true. I think he does know it. That's why he's trying to get everybody he can to go down the same flesh hole that he's going to go down. Right? How can we trust how can we walk in power if all we're worried about is the enemy's plight against us? Jesus told us, hey, you're going to come up against diverse trials and tribulations. It's going to happen. But don't worry, I'll be with you. What, 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 was, his, what was his words? I will be with you even to the end of the age. That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Gary, he's going to be with you through the hard times, through the difficult times. He's going to be with you until he has set you in a place where he's called you to sit. That's your call, brother, and you walk in. Don't let the world interfere with that. Amen? He is my strength, my salvation, my trust, and he's the Lord of my life. There will be nothing that can come against me if I keep him Lord of my life. Amen? He has to be Lord of my life. The Lord is the defense of my life. He is the Lord of my life. Ask yourself this question. Is he truly the Lord of my life? Is he truly the Lord of my life? If you have to look up the word Lord, look up the word Lord. Because I think sometimes even that has to be revelation. What does that mean to be Lord of your life? Have you ever been so in control of somebody that they didn't do nothing without you telling them what to do? And they did it mostly out of fear? That isn't the Lord that we serve. If he's Lord of your life, when he speaks things into you, he's going to give you the, whoa, okay, God, let's go get her done. Amen. And so they go, oh, I can't do that. I'm not equipped for that. You are already equipped. You don't, don't know it yet. You're already equipped. Who am I going to fear? What evil come upon me to devour my flesh? My adversaries and my enemies, they stumble and fall. That is pretty important scripture right there. When the adversary launches an attack against me, he stumbles and he falls. He stumbles and he falls. You know what happens sometimes? We take a step forward. Oh man. We just start going backwards. And then there's a C and he begins to say, I, I knew you couldn't do it. I knew you couldn't fall to that fake. What did he tell Eve in the Bible? Did God really say? To me, that's calling the Lord of Lord and King of Kings and God of the universe. You, you know what? You're a liar. And what's interesting is you got the father of all lies trying to perpetuate more lies on God's people today. He don't care about those that don't know Jesus. He only cares about ruining your life. Because he's already ruined ours. My adversaries and my enemies, they shall stumble and fall. He is my confidence. He is my confidence. I have total and complete confidence in him. I know he's going to protect me. I know he's going to keep me from those enemies. I know he's going to keep the adversary at bay. I know he's going to do that for me. And you know when you get something in your knower, it develops something in your spirit. Once you know what you're knower, it just seems to automatically transfer to your spirit. 
My wife was asking me today, how do you memorize scripture? I don't memorize scripture. I, I can't memorize scripture. But what I do is I read it and I say, Holy Spirit, keep this in me from when I need it. Isn't that what Jesus said? Don't worry about what you're going to say or when you're going to say it because when it's time, I'm going to give you the word. Yes. But how can you speak if it ain't in there? How can you speak what the Holy Spirit wants you to speak if you haven't put it in there? I don't have the memory to sit there and say, okay, the Lord is my strength and my shield. The Lord is my strength and my shield because I forget. But if it's in my spirit, the spirit uses it when it needs to be used. Amen? You agree with that? Yeah. So if you want to have the power and the authority that God has promised you, you need to put the ammunition in you. He protects me from the wicked. He doesn't let the wicked get, get too close. You know, another thing that I think is revelation to a lot of people is that wicked can only get as close as you let the wicked get close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because if you keep the wicked at bay, it can't get very close. Right. Amen? I like what the kids used to say. Of course, my, I don't know if it was the 70s, 80s, 90s, or whatever, but speak to the hand or the ear. <laughs> right? Have you seen that? Isn't that what we keep dealing with, devil? I can't hear you. The reason why I can't hear you is because I have the Holy Spirit developing in me the ability to say, no, that ain't part of my life. Amen? The enemy will always try to accuse you of being weak in areas where you're actually strong. That's what he does. What he does, he convinces you that the areas that you're strong in, he convinces you that you're you're too weak in those areas anyway, even though you're strong. Time after time after time after time, if you don't start rebuking, don't start praying, don't get on your face, ask God to strengthen you, strengthen you, the enemy one day will overcome your blockage. Because you're not putting no reinforcements in there, if I can use that. You're not putting nothing in there that can fight off the enemy. And that's what's dangerous. I read the Bible 15 years ago, did you? Yeah, 15 years ago or so. Uh, what, what, was the, what was the most compelling part? What do you remember the most? Well, it's been so long. So what you're saying is your ammo box is in. What you're saying is you once had a full magazine. Your rotary magazine was pumped full of ammo. You had 15 ammo cans next to you. And then they start depleting. Next thing you know, you have no ammo because you haven't increased the ammunition. Let me tell you something, folks. This might be a, a modern sound, but this is your ammunition. Amen. This is your ammunition to fight the battles that you probably, you're already guaranteed to win if you keep it loaded. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to do the Bible. Jesus said, hey, I'm here. I'm here. All you got to do is ask me. Remember this, folks. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit will never force you to do nothing. Because you don't allow him to. He's not, he's not going to force you. He's not going to say, well, I'm going to take your free will away. And that way you can know. He's not going to do that. You have to make the choice to follow him or not to follow him. You have to make the choice to, 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 Run to him or run from him. Well, I've heard people say this over. It's too hard to serve God. No, it ain't. The problem is we make it a puzzle. It's not a puzzle. Every piece is already fitted together, and our strength is in him. We have confidence in him. He's our protector from the wicked. He's our protector from the enemies. All the enemies that the, that the enemy throws at us, he protects us from them. Walk, imagine yourself walking around in a bubble. Right? But you have the freedom to move in that bubble. And the bubble isn't made out of bubblegum bubble. That bubble is made out of Holy Spirit glass. Amen. And nothing can penetrate but what you open the little window to. Let me tell you something, folks. He's out there in your lifestyle waiting for the opportunity when you crack the armor or open the window of the bubble, and only in he comes. And don't think for one second that he's not. 
And I can prove that by saying this. Have you ever thought about something that didn't line up with God's word? What happens? You begin to dwell on it, don't you? Why well, never rise to it? Wait. Clear that. Clear that. Lord Jesus, take that thing from me. Otherwise, the enemy will bring it back up every time. Though through though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear, verse 3. Though war rises against me, in spite of all this, I shall be confident. First of all, what's the NLT say for confident is? Okay. Mine says confident also. Okay. See there? Well, it doesn't say that in my Bible. It means the same thing. So, I have developed this, I don't know what you would call it, but I have about 15 Bibles on my desk when I prepare the messages. I've got the ESV, I've got the NLT, I've got the NIV, I use the New Americans, i got all these Bibles. And sometimes the word jumps out. Wait a minute, some people use this. Let's go see what that says. It always says the same thing, but a different word for the same thing. Don't you wish he was a walking dictionary? Yeah. Let's see. Confident means, okay, this all means, and it means the same word. Amen? Though a, walk, though a host encamp against me. Have you ever had a host encamp against you? Have you ever been up against something that you didn't think you could ever get through? Amen. Right? Amen. You've been up through something, and you know, how am I going to get through this? My wife always asks me, how come you're so calm? Right. Well, because I know that nothing can attack me. Right. Nothing can get to me. I can't worry about tomorrow. i got to worry about today. And don't get me wrong, folks, there's things in my wife's and I's life where we can actually sit in our each chair and go, what's going to happen? No. But God, but God, it's almost like, it's almost like you're sitting right here and you're going through this stuff. Oh man, what's going to happen? Pretty soon the seat next to you kind of goes, kind of squishes down and suddenly just sat down. And you go, okay, God, I get it. You're here. Okay, I'm over it. Now let's move on. Yeah. Right? Isn't that what happens? Yeah. But our flesh, our flesh always tries to make room the negative. It will run the board this morning. To be filled with the Spirit, you must be empty of self. You must empty yourself of your flesh. If you don't empty yourself of your flesh, of yourself, the Holy Spirit cannot be in control of your life. Why? Because He's not going to take control unless you give Him control. Right? So we have to empty ourselves of our flesh. Now, is anybody in this room perfect? No. no. <laughs> I love it. No. Not at all. <laughs> but the grace of God, when you stumble and when you fall, it's okay, I'm going to help you up. But let's not do that again. Have you experienced that? Oh, yeah. Let's not do that again. God will always, always pick you up when you fall down. Sometimes before you hit the ground, he steps in and carries you the rest of the way. He's my refuge. My heart will not fear. Have you ever sat and read David's Psalms? And then you look at the picture of who David was and some of the things that he did. But then when you read his Psalms, you think, man, this guy is so this guy regrets everything that he did against God. How the scripture where he says, Lord, examine my heart and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Isn't that an act of repentance? I might have failed, Lord, but don't remove yourself from me. Help me go on through it. My heart will not fear. The war arise against me. In spite of this, I shall be he is my help in war. Not physical.
principles. Even though when Jesus turned tables over, I would imagine he probably didn't stumble. I bet they probably flew across the room. But he should help it more. What more? Spiritual warfare. He's given you the weaponry to defeat the spirit of warfare against you. How would you know that? How would you know what that spirit of warfare is? Read, read Ephesians. <coughs> 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, explains warfare, explains who you're fighting against. You're not fighting against something that you can see. Sometimes I wish it was. I could just walk up and strangle him and put him out of his misery, out of my misery and walk on. But I, I, I love when I love when Daniel was praying. And he's waiting for his prayer to be answered. He's waiting to hear from God. He's waiting to hear, waiting to hear, waiting to hear. Pretty soon an angel shows up and says, man, we just had a huge battle. That, that prince of the north guy, he wouldn't let me through. He just he just fought me all the way. You think that was a physical warfare or was it a spirit warfare? Spirit warfare. One guy, one angel against a whole army. And he went to Dan and said, hey, here's the answer to your prayer. Dan's going, man, you're pretty bad. Just conquered all them guys. You have the same spirit and the same strength and the same power in you as that angel did. As a matter of fact, you might have a little bit more because the Holy Spirit that went across the face of the earth and created the heavens and the earth lives in you. You have the power and the authority over demons. Isn't that what Jesus said? You have power and authority over sickness. You have power and authority over death. Well, Pastor, let's not get carried away. I've been raised over from the dead. That don't mean you won't. It don't mean you won't. Smith Wigglesworth probably thought he never would either. Look how many men he raised from the dead. I'm not suggesting you take one and up against the wall and say, wake up. That's probably a little bit hectic. <laughs> But that's what he did. He picked him up and slammed him and get up! Man, that was a good nap, right? Uh -huh. We have that power. We have that authority. But you'll never know that unless this is in you. You'll never know. That's probably notes that I didn't read. You won't know that unless he's in you. That's a good catch, by the way. Thank you. My third eye. <laughs> so let's read it again, real fast. Psalm 27, verse Lord is my light and my strength. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, no adversaries and my enemies, they stumble and fall. My adversaries and my enemies, they stumble. Though I, a host of camp against me, even though a host, a host make a camp around me, my heart will not fear. Though war right arises against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. In spite of what the enemy does, I'm going to walk in the power and the authority that God's word gives me. Surprised, folks, and you'll be surprised how many people use that excuse. I don't have time. You don't have time. Oh, I, I, I don't have time because I'd rather, I'd rather do this or I'd rather do that or I'd rather do this. Or, and the thing is, is. And when I read it, I really don't understand it. Well, that's because you're reading it in you. You're reading it. You're reading it this way. You're reading it with your flesh. You need to read it with the Spirit. 
I had a cousin that had the biggest Bible you've ever seen in your life. And he carried that thing around. It was huge. He'd carry that thing around and I'd say, have you ever read that? Oh, I've read a little bit of it. I said, why are you carrying this thing around? Oh, I don't understand it, but I want people to think that I do. Oh, my God. Wow. I said, Bobby, you're setting yourself up for defeat, my friend. That's right. That's what you're setting yourself up when someone walks up to you and says, hey, what does that say? Oh, I really don't know. Your testimony, your power, your opportunity to share Jesus just went south. Right. Really? Yeah, really. So, Next time I see him, he had a little. I read to Bobby. Oh yeah, read it. Good for you. Yeah. But without consuming the Word of God, without letting it get into your spirit and divide between soul. And spirit between marrow and cartilage, between right and wrong, between truth and a lie, you're never going to get it. I'm not preaching this to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm preaching this to help you realize look, I got power and I got strength, but it has to come from my source. And my source on earth is the Word of God. That's right. And it's revealed to me by the Spirit who. Put it upon men's heart to write it. 2 Timothy 3.16. Let's, let's go there real quick. Let's go there. 2 Timothy 3.16. I had to bring my big Bible today so I could see the words. Sometimes it's that simple. 
Yeah. What kind of soup are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for chicken noodle. Well, it don't, it's down here, by the way. It doesn't take it doesn't take but an opening for the Holy Spirit to jump in. That's right. But if we never give him an opening, but I warn you, you better have the ammunition in your spirit. Because I'll tell you what, when you go up against people that have ammunition from the false cults and the false this and false that, they will whip on you. Oh yeah. Uh They will make you feel Yes, I blew that. I fell on her. But when you have the word in you, when you have the power in you, the enemy can launch any attack he wants. The Holy Spirit says, okay, we're going to defend this right now. Yeah. Isn't that how it works? Has anybody in this room ever experienced that? Yeah. Raise your hand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Aaron, you're going to experience it. Just keep watching. Well, hi, sugar. <laughs> you want to preach a while? Look at you. Right? Yeah, listen to me. So remember, you have a tenfold confident confidence in God in those first three verses of Psalm 27. I would challenge you to take those scriptures home and dwell on them. Dwell on them. And I would also challenge you to get a booklet or a notepad. And every time God speaks to you something in that scripture, write it down. That's why I write my songs. Because when you That's write stuff that. down, you can hear me now. Sometimes when you write stuff down, especially if the Spirit's given you the utterance, when you write it down, it does something to your memory. Yeah. It makes something click. Maybe it's a, I'm not a teacher, but maybe it's the fact that you're watching yourself write it. Maybe when I write, I talk to myself. You know, you can't read it when I'm done, but at least I know what I said. Yeah, different party of the Or why can't my whole brain? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? It does, it's just, it's just not all at once. What's that? It does, just not all at once. Well, maybe it's a good thing it doesn't work all at once, right? Yeah. At least that's how mine works. That's yeah. all your mind. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. pray by the power of the Holy Spirit to bring us into a place of deep walk and deep talk with you. I pray, Lord, that nothing around us will interfere with what you have for us. I pray this morning, Lord, as we get ready to leave this building, that you remind us that each and every one of us make up the church. We are the body of and not one is more important than the other. When we leave this door, the church goes with us because we are the church. Yes. So, Father, I pray right now, Lord, that the word will become will become revelation to us. And that you will reveal the mysteries that you told us, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to us when you send the comforter, when you send the helper. Thank you for today, Lord. We pray that you continue to bless us and keep us, continue to walk before us, that we can have all joy and all peace that come and comes from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.